How are you doing? Ralph here, Ralphie Customs. Um, bit of a different project today. I've still got, let me turn. I'm waiting for steel stock and inspiration. This is proving all right, bastard. There you go. Again, yeah, I'm waiting for steel stock on this job. So let's take a quick walk over. I'm going to do a bit of me work. In the meantime, I'm going to make a cabbage stop for my Atlas lathe. So it's a, a block that bolts on here and either has a dial gauge or a bolt. I'm going to probably use just a bolt that goes against the, the carriage. So when you're making stuff, you can uh, set that to where you want to stop the carriage. So you know that you're only going so deep. So if you're doing two or three parts and you want to duplicate the depth of cut, use the stop. Yeah, really handy bit of kit. So uh, let's get on and see what we can do. Somewhere in there, somewhere in this block, is uh, my stop, carriage stop. Now, I've made a bit of a rough sketch, and if you can understand it, please tell me what it fucking means. But we'll see. I'm going to be making this up as I go along. I've looked at a couple of YouTube videos and got the idea. There's a great guy out there, Mr. Pete 222, right? Tubla Khan, his nickname is. Right, old crusty bastard from the States. He does some great projects. So a big shout out to Tubla Khan. I'll link to him, I think, if I can. But anyway, let's see what we can do. Okay, so we're going to square this block off. There's dozens and dozens of videos showing how to square a block off. So we'll just go and search one if you want to see it. We've just set it on that parallel. We can set some tooling up and get it machining. So I'm going with this four four flute end mill. Gonna call it. It's uh, a really strong way of holding the tool. Um, if I wasn't using this, I'd use this roughing out. I'd use one for roughing out. This one's forked. So I can't use it. I've kept it because the steel on it is fucking great for making tools. Yeah. Anyway, let's get that tight in there. Just find the spanner. Get it short. There we go. And we should be good to go. So we're going to just touch on, yeah, we're not looking for any accurate, that's just touching on now, any accurate measurements, you know, we're not making a spacecraft or anything, um, and we're going to lock the column off at that, and now we'll do it all on the quill, so I've got a readout here, and I can see that I'm going to zero that, uh, I'm going to lock that off and go on the fine, so we'll wind it down. That's a mill, that's 40 thou. Uh, I've got a mill and a half. 60 thou cup. Yeah, let's do it. So I'll take that out of the lathe, um, lathe, take that out of the milling machine. <clears throat> Just give it a quick deeper. Now, before you, before you write in and tell me, I know that if I'd have changed my cut, my cutting uh, orientation, 
that I could most certainly have had less burrs on the workpiece, but I'm not too fussed. To be fair, I'll do the same with the opposite side. Get it there. Give it a, a tweak in the tap, little love tap, the dead, dead blow. And uh, Machine in that one. So let me show you how I do it. Look, I'm just gonna wind this down. It's running at 40, it says, but it's probably less. It's flashing, so you might not be able to read it. I used to use a cigarette paper, but I don't smoke anymore. So you'd wet a cigarette paper in oil, stick it on top of the job, and then when the tool picked it up, you know, you've got the thickness of a cigarette paper, which is about a thou, I remember, it might be two thou, can't remember, but. Because I'm not doing precision engineering, I wind this down. That's just touching. Yeah, maybe taking a slight cut actually. So move it out of the way and come up here. You go, I'm cheated because I'd already zeroed it. So that's just took a point zero three of a millimetre cut. What we're gonna do is wind that down to about a mil just to get the surface nice and clean. Yeah. And now we know that'll do near enough's good enough yep yeah. we can lock that off well, bear with so we'll lock that off on the side here lock the quill off and uh, speed it up and machine away These alley chips get everywhere. So, let's just de rag, de rag that so it sits, it sits happier in the vice. And uh, that'll be the four big cuts done. And just get on and do the ends. You'll see these lines. I'm sure the cameras will pick them up. I don't know if I can zoom in. No, I can't zoom in this mode. So I can't zoom in. Let's have it out of the truck and show you what what's happened. See, see those lines? The cut is damaged. The tool's damaged on the side flukes. So if you're using the end on, great, plenty of life left in the old girl. But if you're using the side to cut like I just have, it's gonna give you that. Now, in a real engineering environment, that's catastrophic if you're doing it a sized part. Uh, I suppose you could take a fine cut and get rid of it. You could salvage it, yeah, but it's a pain in the ass. Don't matter a fuck with this. Just roughing it out as a square block and we'll uh, change the cutter accordingly. So you'll see, change that cutter, and the difference is obvious, look. But there you go. One squared out block, ready to rock and roll. Okay, so there we go. Now, according to my rudimentary uh, calculations, we're looking for somewhere around 30 by 50 by 19 thick. And we've got, let's have a look. We've got nearly 40 by a lot fucking longer, 70 odd, yeah, by 26. So, I'm going to mark that up and I'm going to rough it out 
on the bandsaw and then we'll finish it off in the milling machine so I think obviously this way is going to be the 30 way sorry fucking out the 50 way which comes somewhere around there we'll give ourselves a bit of something to work to so I'll just get a square there with so we'll go that's going to be the 50 so we'll just scribe a line it's just over 50 we'll go 51 yeah again we're just going to rough the size out we'll chop that off there that wants to be 19 well we're going to machine that that's 24 and a half about an inch 25 so we need fucking on six mil that's a good cook but we'll do that on the mill and the width i've got 38 although i've estimated 30 i might leave that i like that it looks nice we'll see how it looks on the lathe but we'll get a cut off on the bandsaw and we'll go from there right that's got it chopped off and as far as the width goes if i look at it in situ to me that's uh not too bad it doesn't look oversized i might leave it at that we'll see see how we get on we're ready to uh, machine that flat now we'll mill that end off and i'll give us a 50 and then we'll go from there yeah Okay, so we've got this block now. It's the right length. Uh, sorry, it's not the right fucking length, is it? Where are we? We've got nothing accurate. Nearly 40. We've got 50, just over. So we're about the right length. Um, we're not decided for definite on this width thing, so I'll go ahead and I'll cut this. Yeah, we've got... That's on 25, it's about an inch, and I want 19 according to my drawing. So we'll go ahead, we'll black this up, look. This is Cheap Man's Engineering Blue with a marker pen. Not the best marker pen in the world. And we'll set our verniers, our very nears, at 19. <laughs> 19 come on don't you bastard no see look at 18.9 oh 1909 that'll do we'll lock that off and we'll give ourselves a, a line a straight line would be nice for it. it's not easy to do on camera but you get the impression we'll go ahead and do the other side just to try and do it so I don't look such a fuckwit while I'm knocking everything about. So we'll just give that a mark and we'll work to that line. Near enough is good enough. So we'll set this on some parallels. We're not going to machine it on the parallels, but we will set this on to where that line is that line just above the chuck there so yeah we know that the sides it are square so this vice should hold it square but we're going to get a parallel there as a little bit of insurance and we'll just give that a tap wiggle those out if they'll come if not they can stay there no they're out Get those out of the way and then machine it down. Okay, so right now we're ready to do a finishing pass. 
to size we're just above that line that I marked which I'm going to struggle to uh, show on camera so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the cutter down level with the line and machine away basically Right, <coughs> so next up we need to cut the slot out, the, the cut out so this drops over the ways, yeah, over the way there. And we're going to cut a little notch out that will sit just, just above this, so the, the bottom of it will sit just above this if I can focus. Here's a 3.8, which is 9.3 or something in, in new money, so we're going to go about 8.5 mil slot and we're going to come this clean bit back where the way cleaner cleans it yeah so it's about 15 mil that is i've already measured that so we're going to cut a 15 by 8 mil notch out of this block and that'll give us the shape of it to sit on top right so we've got that marked we've got our 8 by 15 slot marks with the old uh, redneck engineer's blue the fucking malka pen anyway I'm going to flip the camera around. It's a bit wobbly if I film this way. I've, I've tried switching ends. I don't like the shot from the other end. But we'll go from this end and you'll see me uh, setting it and machining it. Yeah, the problem with filming this end is, look, see that? It's on a board. I have to stand it on a board between the table that my mill's on and the table that my lathe's on. Um, but you get a picture, you know. Um, it's like watching fucking paint dry, watching someone mill a block out, so I'm be fast forwarding in between explaining and doing. So that's got uh, chopped out. We'll get our de-ragged, clean any burrs off, and uh, that's a good way to get in the top part done. Okay, so I've done that slot. Now we need to mark the hole for the stop, yeah, because we're going to run a bolt through this that the carriage is going to come to rest against, and we need to mark the holes for the clamping bolts that are going to go straight through. We're going to make a plate that fits underneath that clamps it up so it sandwiches it all will become apparent um, we just need to find the centre of that and then come out for each bolt so I decided to stick with that size but it's going to be really fucking awkward now I've said that isn't it? it's going to be something odd like I don't know 38 mil 38 mil so the centre is 19 mil so we can mark a centre line 19 is going to be coming up there 19 Ooh, that'll do for me 19 on the money mark a center line and half a 19 everybody is what 9.5 so we'll go 9.5 ish that'll do lock that off so we can go halfway there halfway there now what i want to do is make sure that it misses this cutout and we're going m5 might go m6 don't know probably m5 so we know it's two and a half mil is half of that um and i think if we allow four mil from here and remember that this slot was 15 yeah so we've got 19 mil off the end. Call it 20. Why not? Sod the expense. Call it 20 mil. See? So we can mark 20 mil. And that gives us the two hole centres for the clamp. I think that'll do nicely. And plenty of room here to work off for the rest of it. I think. Well, I might back off a bit. I'm going to back off a bit. Fuck it. Right. 
Let's fucking do it. Let's do it, shall we? Let's go 24. 24, oh, look how we're living on the edge, aren't we? We're going to go 24. Mm. So that's that one. Yep. And now we can look. We know that we've now got 27 mil of meat left on that. So anywhere within that 27 mil, we could go off of that. We can go 13 and a half. Then we can mark a line there, which I'll just use the old redneck blue. So we'll go 13 and a half. So it's halfway between the uh, clump bolts and the end of the job. And we'll measure this up. That's 19. So we'll go nine and a half again. Yeah, but I wish he'd made it fucking 20. So he could go 10 every time. Come on, boy. Nine and a half. Near enough. For that one there. Do it twice, look, and then we'll split a difference up, Bob. On. So that gives us that one for the through hole. We'll get those done. So I'm just uh, putting a pilot drill, just with a centre drill there, just to mark them, get them in position, and then uh, I'm going to drill them out with a 5mm clearance. So the bolts will fit through. So now they're drilled through clearance, we're going to drill, just think the cap heads in, 8.43 that measures, so 8.5 drill bit. And we know that we want, if you've got, I don't know, you can see it, it's probably upside down or something, it's about 4.8, 4.89 or something, so we're going to go 5 mil, or 4.8, I don't know, 5 mil deep, yeah? See what happens. So we've set the stop to zero. When that touches down, we're on zero, and we're going to go five mil deep. So here we go, bottoms up. Centre this way, we'll see this way by touching on and looking at the witness marks that the drill makes. Just eyeball it, yeah? Just back that off a bit. Could have set off a stop or something, but you know, it's not rocket science, we're not building a spaceship. So, touch on, 5 mil deep. 4, 4 and a half, 4, 8, 4, 9, 4, 5. Let's check how that one sits in. If it, there you go, look at that. Look at that bad boy. Just, just feel it, which is nice. So, that's that side done. Now let's get on to the through part. Now, I can't decide. That's going to clamp on the way, on the bed of the lathe. Bed of the lathe, bed of the lathe, bed of the lathe, yeah. Right? And we're going to have a protrusion. To, to stop, so the carriage hits it, so it slides along tap. I don't want it to hit this. I want to stop, I want to find adjustment and all that shit if we can. So I'm either going to put a through bolt with a couple of nuts on, I'm going to drill and tap it. It's quite a deep. Uh, I'm going to check my taps, and if I've got a tap that'll do it, I reckon we're good for the fucking tap. We'll do it on the milling machine, can't we? Yeah, let's have a look. So we're going to. Set it up. I need a parallel. I don't want to have it too proud. I need to, don't want it hanging out because it'll want to do this. I want to mount it in the middle with a parallel under. So let's get the skinny parallels out again. Face them off to each other. Like that. And drop that on. Kind of like that. Yeah. And just nip it up. And then give it a little love tap. So we'll just get that. If you use a dead, use a dead blow on for setting these. I should have took a drill bit out. 
people will be moaning, but I don't care, you know. The guy that taught me didn't exist. I've had to learn this all myself, so there you go. Use a dead blow. He stops his bouncing because he stays put. You don't bounce off like, look, am I? This wants to bounce and it'll throw that back out. Whereas use a dead blow, it won't. Yeah? Sorted. So I drew this out 6.8 to take an 8 mil tap. We're going to go for threading. If I can't thread it all the way, then I'll finish it off with a clearance. So we'll have a threaded most of the way and clearance out of the arse end of it or something similar. Let's see, let's just get this lined up. Right, so. Get that fucker lined up. Yeah, that looks good. We'll lock off both axes. So now we've just got it locked off, the bed's locked off, just using it like a fucking pillager. So we're going to do some tapping, check the machine tap and it is, it's okay, it's going to clear it. This has got a feature where you hit a button and it goes backwards, albeit briefly. See? So, see what it does, eh? Nice and steady. There you go, that's doing it good. We shouldn't need to reverse because it's a machine tab. We should just apply a nice steady pressure and hopefully that'll work its way all the way through. We can back off if we want to show off. Look, and it'll work its way out. And it should work its way in. See, I'm not hands free, look. We could increase the speed a little as well, to be fair. Just to get it doing it. Well, that was quite uneventful. Just had to tweak it up a bit and uh, finish it off. It's gone through lovely, actually. So let's have that out. I've got a nice sharp threads. I think the camera won't pick up on. Nice sharp threads through there. Bit of a burr out on the end. Let's see if that a quick, quick whirly bird. Both ends there. So that is pretty much the top part made. We just need to make a clamping plate for the bottom, sort out a bolt, sort out these fasteners, and the jobs are good. In. So I'm looking for uh, bits for this bottom plate, and this is what I've got. That's That's just too small. That's fucking really thick and, you know, I can see one in there, but don't know about getting it out. That's some random shaped, unfinished project. But this, this, my friends, looks about spot on for it. Look. So I will spare you me squaring that out, but we're about the right width. Look. Just a kiss on each side, trim that end, cut that off, make it even, and we could be in with a chance. Yeah, I'll get that squared off. I won't film it because fuck me, you know, and I'll get it trimmed to size and we'll go from there. Okay, so I've just done the top and bottom of that. I've not done the sides yet, because I'm going to trim it to size. How I'm going to do it, I'm going to transfer the size, which is going to be really difficult to do on the fucking camera. But basically, I'm going to line the top up by feeling it, and I can't really show you that, like that, and the same there, and draw around it. So just scribe around it, yeah? That gives us a rough size. Now, I need to come back a little bit here because the gap under the lathe way, under the bed of the lathe, is less 
I've not got, I can't go that far over because we've got the gears for the um, carriage, basically. We've got the carriage gears run there, so we need to move that that way a bit, which I'll calculate and machine accordingly. Okay, so now we've got our bomb piece that's all sized up. We'll clamp the two together where they're going to live, like, to line them up. And I'm just going to run this 5.5 through the bolt holes just to touch on the base plate and that'll give us the marks that we need to see where to drill and tap it for the bolts. So it's a bit shaky. Eh? So there you go. Easy peasy. Now we can just clamp that in, drill it and tap it. So we'll tap this now. I could have gone over to the mill and did it like the eight mil one we did earlier, but these are not machine taps, these are hand taps, so you want to be extra careful, you know. It's only five mil, M5, you don't want to break it. So we just take it nice and steady and get the job done. So that's it about done. I decided to go for this long cap head. It threads all the way, well, halfway. You know, we can always change it for something more threaded if needs be. And then we can lock it off. We can set it to fine tune if we need to. I don't think we'll need to. I think we'll just be able to slide it along and clamp it. Let's go and try it on the lathe and see what's what. Look at this, one edge that I didn't machine. That's really bad engineering practice, Ralph. But uh, who's going to know, eh? Especially after we give it the old fucking magic ruler trick. Yeah. Right, let's go and try it on, eh? There it is, in all its glory. Yeah, sitting pretty. Is I may machine a little bit more out of this slot just to close that gap up, but I'm not at fuss because it's that's clamped down really fucking tight. It does it, and the carriage comes along. We brush the camera, here's the stop, boosh, and then you machine away. Next job, same again, next job, same again, yeah? And obviously when you're not using it, you can struggle one-handed with a camera, stick it down there, where it lives. Quite happily. We'll put that Allen wrench, Allen wrench, put that Allen key in with the rest of the goodies and uh, call that a job well done. Sorted. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe, give us a bit of a share, and I'll see you next time. Big love, everyone. Bye bye.